You may avail it. for their photograph. And this chart, I can also suggest, can be updated. So if you know of a photograph from anyone who is not included on this uh, chart, send it our way, and we can update that online, and the picture will also be on the website that I may, uh, maintain um, called stormbound.org, uh, where I have a page dedicated to the visual history of the Mount Carmel property.
you've seen the museum, you certainly, we've had visitors from 39 states and 14 foreign countries. And they did not come to the Helen Marie Taylor Museum for Life and History Waco to see the Constitution exhibit or the Cotton Palace exhibit or some of the other things that we have that are interesting. They came to see the Dividium exhibit. And the whole world is still interested in the museum. But what was a shock to them when they got here to see the Davidian exhibit was to find that back to back with it was a great constitutional exhibit that had the Bill of Rights right back to back with it. It pointed up all of your constitutional rights violations. Yep. And so thanks to this wonderful Professor Nelson over here, who we all give him a round of applause again. <laughs> Professor Nelson has lifted this to a new, what do I say, Professor Nelson? It's a, this, this has done a great deal to lift the conversation, the reflections, and give it a kind of, I don't like the word respectability, but it, it gives it a kind of um, respectability because Baylor University and the religion department has sponsored it. What it has set off in me, now, I appreciate that so much, but I have to say, I don't care that much about your religion. I don't even care if I don't understand your religion. What I care passionately about is, you have a right to religion. That's right. You have a right. <laughs> and I know Mr. Reeves has said in one of the films that I've seen is that these people are different from us, and they know more about the Bible, and, and they have a different uh, cultural, religious life. Uh, so what? I mean, uh, that's what America is all about. Amen. And uh, I'm very proud to claim Ken to James Madison. Yeah. He spent his entire life uh, preoccupied with trying to give all of us our freedom of conscience and freedom of religion. And many people don't know, but that, that James Madison is a direct descendant of the man who gave us the first consolidated English language and the first English Bible translated from the original Hebrew, and that's William Tyndale. William Tyndale was burned at the stake, burned at the stake, you know, the Davidians, in 1536 for the terrible crime of translating the Bible from the original Hebrew into his newly uh, consolidated English language. And thank heavens, uh, Shakespeare's nurse brought him up on the Tyndale Bible, so all of, all of Shakespeare's plays are in Tyndale English. And if we didn't attract the attention of the world to the English language through our English Bible, we certainly got them through Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> and I used to teach Shakespeare, so that mattered to me too. Anyway, William Tyndale's sister married a man named Roland Taylor. And Roland Taylor had been at Cambridge and gotten a Doctor of Divinity degree, I mean a Doctor of Laws degree. And when he saw his brother-in-law burned at the stake in Brussels, and going through all of that, he went back to Cambridge and got a Doctor of Divinity degree. Well, by this time, Anne Boleyn, who Henry VIII was totally enamored of, you know, and she was saying, Henry, Henry, if you have all these Anglican churches, why not an Anglican Bible? And yes, and yes, if you say so, and yes, you know. Well, she finally talked him into it, but it was eight months after they were burned for uh, William Tyndale. But his brother-in-law, when he came forward, the next 20 years they were able to get the Anglican Bible in all these Anglican churches. And in fact, when old Henry gave 